Have you ever wondered how a biomechanist describes motion? Watch this video to find out. Hey guys, Dr. Gooden here with part two about systems and motion in biomechanics. Now in part one, we defined what a system was. We looked at the basic anatomical reference terms, directional terms, planes and axes, Cartesian coordinate planes. And in this video, we will be getting a little bit deeper into the definitions of different types of motion um, as far as biomechanics goes, how, how a biomechanist would describe motion, as well as looking at what a kinetic chain is and, and the implications that that has on how we analyze motion. All right, let's get right into the material. Now, before we talk about different types of movement that can occur in our free body diagrams and in these Cartesian coordinate frames of reference, we have to talk about some different types of uh, movement. So first, let's define it. Motion is defined as a change in position with respect to both spatial, where it is in space, and temporal, where it is in time, frames of reference. So in order to move, you have to have a change in position and a change in time. You can't have an instantaneous movement, neither can you have a change in time with no movement. Neither of those things would be motion. You have to have both. And a force is something that possesses the capability to cause, capability to cause a change in motion or shape of the system. Okay, so without force, motion does not occur. If you're wanting to look for where forces are occurring, you tend to want to look for where the most movement is happening and vice versa. If you know where the most force is occurring, then that's where movement is going to happen as well. Remember that force equals mass times acceleration. Mass times acceleration. So if you're wanting a mass to accelerate, aka move, you have to apply force to it. Now here are some types of movement. Translation. Translation is movement along one of the three axes, x, y, or z, in which all points of the system move at the same time. So think about a cyclist who's going down a hill, and who's coasting. There's no movement of the cyclist and they're just moving. They're translating um, in the x-axis because the x-axis tends to be straight ahead for our systems as long as it's a um, somatic system. Um, rotation occurs when, all, uh, when the system is restricted to move around a single fixed axis, um, so in a circular path. This is also called angular motion. So think of a diver who's doing some sort of a triple front flip. Now, you they are also translating through the air because they're going up and down. But imagine if we could fix that diver in space and keep them spinning, keep them rotating. That would be rotation. General motion is a combination of both translation and rotation. So that's what most human movement tends to be, is this general motion. As biomechanists, we have many different ways of distinguishing between different types of movement. So a discrete movement has very definite beginning and ending points whereas continuous movement cycles through motion with really no well-defined beginning or end. Running would be a continuous movement, whereas squatting, because you have a, a definite beginning and end of the squat, you start with the bar on your back and you end either standing up or dead if you fail, that would be a discrete movement, a definite beginning and end. Now, but we also have repeated discrete and serial. So repeated discrete is sometimes hard to distinguish between um, this type of movement and continuous movement. But in this type of movement, there is a recovery phase. So we want to think of things like rowing, which is bilateral. So you have the pull of the row, the pull stroke that propels you forward or backwards because they're facing backwards. And then that recovery phase where they're resetting to pull again or wheelchair racing is the same thing. You have a bilateral push on the wheels and then a recovery where you come back to grab the wheels again. So it's more of a repeated discrete movement. And then serial is a series of connected but different discrete motions. So we want to think of something like triple jump, where each jump is different because it's with a different leg and they're, they are technically different movements, but they're all linked together into what we call triple jump. Something like um, a shot put might be similar because depending on whether you do a glide or the rotational style of throwing, um, there are there are different types of movements leading up to that throw, but they're all together in your shot put motion that you do when you throw a shot put. Now we also have gross motor and fine motor 
skills or movements, and I'm sure you know what these are already. So gross motor movement would require less precision and typically requires greater degrees of force. This is what most people think of when they think of athletics. Yes, yes, we have to be precise in athletics, but compared to fine motor skills, um, not as precise. So these are things like running, jumping, and throwing, and all the related skills. Fine motors uh, movements require high precision and a smaller relative number of motor units. And these motor units might be connected to fewer muscle fibers as well. So these are things like visual eye tracking. Um, sorry for my handwriting there. Eye tracking, uh, maybe if you're a musician playing the piano or any other instrument, things like that. So say in sport, you have an outfielder in baseball and he's tracking the movement of a fly ball and that would be fine motor. And then as soon as he starts sprinting and diving to catch that ball, that would be a gross motor movement. Now a kinetic chain is a system of linked rigid bodies uh, subject for force application. So we wanna think of these segments and these, the links between them as joints um, as being subject to forces. If we're talking about a simple kinetic chain, then each segment participates in no more than two linkages. So this could be your arm or maybe your leg or maybe even just um, a single joint with two segments, one on either end. But a complex kinetic chain uh, has a segment that is linked to more than two other segments. So for instance, the torso. So here in our diagrams, the torso, this would be complex because you can see that the torso is linked to uh, two shoulder joints and two hip joints. Um, so that's more than two different linkages. Now, when we're considering the kinetic chain, we can talk about movement in terms of being open or closed. An open kinetic chain movement is when the distal segment is free to move. So think of a barbell curl where you have the weight in your hands and you're curling the barbell up. Um, this distal segment, where my hand is, is free to move around. It's, yes, it's holding a bar, uh, but it's free to move. It's not fixed on the ground. An even more open, open kinetic chain movement would be a dumbbell curl. Because now, not only are my, are my hands free to move, but they're free from each other and they have um, more degrees of freedom that way. A push-up would be closed kinetic chain because now my hands are on the ground, the ground doesn't move, but the rest of my joints and segments have to move in order to allow movement um, of this segment. So it's cooperative motion. In this case, squats would be closed kinetic chain. And running, well, the plant foot would be closed kinetic chain because as soon as you plant it on the ground, it's fixed until you lift it, but the swing leg would be open. Okay, let's review. So, so far in this video, we've covered a definition of the system. So what is a system and what do we use it for? We've talked about anatomical directions like superior and inferior, anterior, posterior, distal, proximal. We've talked about planes, sagittal, frontal, transverse, and the axes associated with those planes. We've talked about 2D and 3D coordinates. And we've talked about different movement classifications. So discrete versus continuous versus serial discrete, um, gross versus fine, open versus closed kinetic chain. And then we've defined what a kinetic chain is. And we've talked about both simple and complex kinetic chains. Okay, thanks so much for watching. And if you liked the video, if it was helpful to you, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I'd love to answer that um, or engage with you um, about this content in any way. If you have any ideas for future videos that you would like me to do that would be helpful to you, let me know as well in the comments and I'll try to make it happen. Um, and don't forget, please subscribe to the channel. It is really helpful to get the videos out there, to get this information out to potential kinesiology students or up and coming strength coaches or people in the industry who maybe wanna brush up on some of this info. Really helpful when you guys subscribe, so thank you so much. Yeah.